Sound engineering, computer games and virtual reality applications demand real-time performance. Convolutions are inherently embedded into their inner workings, for example in the form of finite impulse response filtering for artificial reverberation. Convolution, evaluated according to its definition, is too slow to keep up. It introduces audible latency. How can we compute convolution fast? Hi everyone, this is Jan Wilczek from thewolfsound.com and in this video I would like to discuss the fast convolution algorithms. As you may know, the straightforward evaluation of the linear convolution, according to the definition, has O n squared running time, which is too slow for real-time setting when we need to calculate convolution every, let's say, 10 milliseconds. Fortunately, as we know from the previous video, we can uh -huh. obtain a linear convolution out of the circular convolution. And the circular convolution can be computed in all n log n time thanks to the detour through the discrete frequency domain and the usage of the fast Fourier transform algorithm. We just need to pay special attention to the circular convolution artifacts. Let me remind you that multiplication in the discrete Fourier transform domain is equivalent to the circular convolution in the time domain. What is more, discrete Fourier transform can be computed in all n log n running time using the fast Fourier transform algorithm and the inverse DFT can be computed via IFFT algorithm. Now, the FFT-based fast convolution algorithm works as follows. Given two input signals, we pad them with zeros so that each of them has length equal to the sum of these two signals' lengths, minus one, so the length of the linear convolution between the two. The length can be further extended so uh, that the length of these signals is a power of two, because power of two yields the most efficient implementation of the fast Fourier transform algorithm. Then we transform these signals into the DFT domain using the FFT algorithm. Then we multiply the discrete frequency vector, and then we go back to the time domain via the inverse fast Fourier transform algorithm. And finally, we trim our output so that it contains only as many samples as the linear convolution of the two would have. The running time of this algorithm is O n log n, thanks to the usage of the FFT. I have included the implementation of this algorithm and all the remaining algorithms in the related article over at thewolfsound.com, which I link to in the description below, and I highly encourage you to check it out. In sound engineering, game audio, and virtual reality applications, the input signal is processed in blocks of, for example, 64, 128, 256 samples or more. In order to continuously convolve our filter with the incoming signal, we need to turn to the block-based convolution methods. In this video, I'll discuss two of these methods, which is the overlap add scheme and overlap save scheme. In the overlap add scheme, we perform the fast convolution between the input block and the filter, and then we store the result, which is longer than the input block length. We then add successive parts of the output to the subsequent blocks. We thus need to store sufficiently many previous results. Again, our Fourier transform length need to be as long as the linear convolution result of the input block and our filter. So if our input block has length b and our filter has length n, then our transform length k should be at least n plus b minus 1. And again, we can look for a smallest power of 2 that is greater than or equal to this number. In this way, we don't have to worry 
that the convolution result of the current block did not fit into the current output block because it will be added to one of the subsequent output blocks. The disadvantage of the overlap else scheme is that we need to explicitly store the results of the previous convolutions. So can we do better? In the overlap save scheme, instead of storing the results of the previous convolutions, we store the input blocks and we store as many of them so as the circular convolution between the stored blocks and the filter yields at least B valid samples at the end of our circular convolution procedure. Obviously, because we don't have any zero padding, some of the samples of the output need to be discarded. But by having enough input blocks stored, we make sure that at least B samples are valid in the output. We output these B samples and discard the rest. In this way, we don't have to store the previous convolution results, nor do we have to add them up in any way. If the filter to convolve our signal with is long, for example, if it represents an impulse response of a large hall with long reverberation time, we need to partition that filter as well. This yields the partitioned convolution algorithms, which are current state of the art. One of the advantages of these methods is that we can avoid repetitive calculation of the discrete frequency domain transforms of the input blocks by calculating them only once and then delaying them using the frequency domain delay lines. If you're interested in partitioned convolution methods, then I highly encourage you to check out the article over at dwolfson.com and the relevant literature. I have linked to both in the description below the video. To summarize, in this video, we review the fast convolution algorithms for sound processing. In the FFT-based fast convolution, we pad the input signal with sufficiently many zeros in order to obtain linear convolution out of the circular convolution. We utilize the advantage of the FFT algorithm, which has O n log n running time. For real-time applications, we have our input processed in blocks of samples. That is why we need to turn to block-based convolution. In the overlap add scheme, we perform the fast convolution between the input block and the filter and store the results, adding it part by part to the subsequent output blocks. In the overlap save scheme, we store the input blocks and then compute the circular convolution between the stored input blocks and the filter. And finally, output only last B samples, which are equivalent to the linear convolution result. If the filters that we use are also of significant length, we may need to turn to the partitioned convolution results, which are even more efficient. You can find the implementations of all the described methods and even more insight in the related article over at dwolfsound.com. I highly encourage you to check it out. Other than that, I would like to encourage you to uh -huh. subscribe to this channel, hit the thumbs up and turn on notifications in order not to miss out on the upcoming videos on convolution. Thanks for watching and take care.